you're paying streaming companies way too much money. Don't believe me? If you paid for Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, and Paramount+, Plus altogether, you'd be paying $58.96 a month. And that's just for the basic plans without any ads. With prices rising and shows, movies, and music being pulled from their respective platforms, you need to be in control of your media. And I'm going to show you how to do it the free and easy way with Plex. So what exactly is Plex? Well, in simple terms, it's like having your own Netflix, but for free. Now the technical explanation for those of you who care or just want to feel smart. Plex is an application or a front-end interface that you can deploy on a personal, private server that automatically catalogs your movies, TV shows, and music, as well as adding metadata such as cover art and other information about your media for you. Since Plex will be hosted on a private server on your local network, you can use it from anywhere on your network on any device you want. Another huge plus of running on a local machine is that your user data and browsing habits are free from the greedy grippers of the big streaming companies. That also means that your movies and shows never get pulled from the platform and you're always in charge of your media. So what exactly do you need for a Plex server? All you really need is a computer and a network connection. I mean, you can use an old Windows computer you have taken up space in your closet, a MacBook you never use, a Docker container, or even a mini computer like a Raspberry Pi or a Zima board. Even though I wouldn't really recommend that unless you have mass storage capabilities and a dedicated GPU for video decoding, or else you'll have a really bad time. And the best option on the list, a custom built NAS slash Plex server wombo combo. And yes, they can get pricey, but if you have the money, I think it's well worth it to have the better experience on Plex. For me, I'm gonna use my Windows PC for this video, but I'll include instructions for other operating systems in this video as well. I like to have a master folder that contains two other folders, one named movies and the other named TV shows for TV shows, obviously. For TV shows, it is extremely important that your folder containing your downloaded shows contain another folder with the show name and the episode number so that Plex can format them properly. Now that you know everything that you need, let's go ahead and get everything set up. If you're using Casa OS on a Linux machine, it's super simple to get Plex installed. You literally just go to the App Store, install Plex, and click on it to configure your server. Yes, it really is that easy. If you're using a dedicated Linux machine, it gets a bit more complicated. If you're using an Ubuntu or an Ubuntu-based distro, you can download the .deb package straight from the Plex website. Next, you'll want to open up the terminal and use this command, sudo dpkg-i and your file name .deb. To set up the Plex Media Server on the same machine you installed the server on, open a browser window and go to http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 32400 slash web. If you're on a Fedora or CentOS based distro, download the .rpm package from the Plex website. Again, open the terminal and enter the command sudo dnf install and the file name .rpm. Again, to set up the server on the same machine that you installed the server on, open a browser window and go to http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 32400 slash web. Thankfully for you Windows users, me included, it's much simpler than Linux. You can download the Windows installer .exe file straight from the Plex website as well. And once it's downloaded, you just open the .exe file It'll start the installer, which will take you through the usual installation method like any other application. At the final screen, click the launch button. If you don't select this, launch the server from the start button. The Plex Media Server will launch and display an icon in the system tray here. To set up the Plex Media Server, choose Open Plex button. If you don't plan on installing the server in any of the default locations, your chosen path will be used for future updates and installations. In order to install Plex in the default path, after specifying a custom path, you need to either manually enter the default path or delete the registry key using the RegEdit Windows System tool. The registry key to reset the path back to default is here on the screen for you. If you're on a Mac, it's even easier, so all of you Mac is better people can rejoice. Anyways, like the other versions, you can download the file straight from the website, but this time it'll be a .zip file. Next, you'll unzip the file and drag the Plex Media Server app to the Applications folder. Once you've placed the app in the correct folder, launch the Plex Media Server from the Applications folder. To set up the Plex Media Server from the server computer, 
launch the open plex option from the carrot icon in your Mac's menu bar. Now you may be asking, well, what if I'm not on my computer? Or what if I have a headless server install? Well, you don't have to be at your computer to access your server. Using any device with internet browsing capabilities, all you have to do is type in the IP address of your computer or server, the port number for the Plex server, and add slash web to the end of that, and you should be able to access your server. But if you don't know your device's IP address, you can find that by opening a command prompt on Windows and type IP config, and it will be the Ethernet adapter if you're on a wired connection, or wireless LAN adapter, or Wi-Fi, if you're using a wireless connection. Please don't use a wireless connection. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, you can open a terminal window and input the command if config this time. You wanna look for the ETH0 section of the output and your IP address will be listed as INET. Your IP address will either start with a 192.168 and have two other groups of numbers after it, or a 10 dot with three other groups of numbers behind it, depending on your ISP and your router model. Okay, so now all of you, no matter what system you're using, know how to download, run, and access your Plex server. Let's configure some settings to make sure that you're able to actually watch and listen to your media. Once you open the Plex app, it will prompt you to make an account, but don't worry, while there are some paid features, it's completely free to use the full basic functionality of the service. Once you're in, it'll prompt you for a friendly name. This is just a name that makes the Plex server easier to identify. You can also opt into connecting your server to Plex to access it from outside of your network, but that's not required. Once we're in, we can start adding our media. You'll want to add a library by clicking the Add Library button. Then you'll choose the appropriate library type, and you can name the library if you want, but it's not required. I like to name them just for organization, and once that library is created, click Next, click Add Folder, and browse for the folder that you want to add, and click Add. If you want to add some more folders, you'll go through the exact same process, but obviously change the library type and name for the new folders. And you can configure some advanced settings if you like, but I'm not going to for this video. Once you're done, click on Add Library, and the media in your selected folder will be found and added to the database automatically. Now that you have everything set up and ready to go, you actually need something to watch your movies and shows on. You can download the Plex app on your phone, whether it's Android or iPhone. You can use your game console, smart TV, pretty much anything you want to watch on. Once that's downloaded, you'll want to make sure that you're connected to the same network as your server. When you open the application, it will automatically set up everything for you so you can just start streaming your media. So now that you know how to set up your server, or if you've been following along, you've already set up your server, I feel like that deserves a like and a subscribe. I really appreciate you watching this video, and if you'd like, you can join the Discord with the link in the description, and I will see you guys in the next video.